the easiest Lionel whistle controller ever on this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Hello again, this is Mike with another episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And today we're diving into a deceptively simple project, building the easiest Lionel whistle, bell, and horn controller ever. If your transformer is missing that classic whistle button, or maybe it has the whistle but no bell function, this DIY controller is going to save the day, and it's easier than you think. It's certainly easier than I thought it would be. Plus, we'll take a quick trip down memory lane with the history of Lionel whistles and break down the tech behind them. So grab your tools and let's get started. Now, why would you need a custom whistle controller? Well, some older Lionel transformers, especially entry-level ones, don't have a built-in whistle or horn functions. Others might have a whistle and horn, but they lack the bell function. And let's be real, nothing brings that layout to life more than that iconic whistle, horn, and bell sound. Whether you're running vintage O-gauge or more modern conventional control Lionel trains, this controller will give you full command of those sounds without breaking the bank and without a degree in electronics. Plus, it's a fun project that you can knock out in an evening. Before we grab our soldering iron, let's hop in the Wayback Machine. Lionel's whistle feature dates back 90 years to 1935 when they introduced the whistle tender for their O-gauge trains. These tenders had a motor-driven whistle operated by a rectifier in the transformer, which superimposed a DC voltage on top of the regular AC voltage and gave a small boost to the overall voltage to activate the motor that drives the whistle. By the 1940s, Lionel refined the system, adding diesel horns and later remotely controlled bells with the whistle and horn sounds for that authentic railroad vibe. Fast forward to today and modern Lionel trains use digital soundboards, but the core principle is still the same. Pretty cool how a little voltage tweak can make such a big difference, right? So how does it work? Lionel's whistle and bell systems rely on a DC voltage superimposed on the AC track power. The transformer sends a positive DC pulse for the whistle or horn and a negative DC pulse for the bell. Inside the locomotive or tender, a special relay that ignores AC voltage and only responds to DC voltage is employed. Or in more modern models, a soundboard picks up this signal and activates the right sound. Remember that Lionel's classic open frame motors are universal and that they operate on either AC or DC, or in this case, both types of power at the same time. Now, I don't need a controller on my layout as all of my transformers include the necessary features, but I was surfing the web researching a completely unrelated project when I stumbled upon a thread discussing options for wiring a DIY whistle controller. Intrigued, I kept reading. The main post contained a wiring diagram showing how to link a series of diodes to create the necessary DC voltage offset to activate the sounds. It's not a complex circuit, but it involves a bit of soldering to link all those diodes together. Then another post on the same message board said, hey, why not just use a D-cell battery to make the DC signal instead of diodes? A battery? Ridiculous, I thought. After all, if it was that simple, certainly Lionel would have gone down that road rather than going through all of the design steps to add disc rectifiers to transformers and such. But then, the more I thought about it, the more I realized... It could work! And so I tried it, and to my amazement, it does work! So, let's make this setup a little bit more permanent than what you see here. A DIY controller creates the DC signal usually created by the transformer's internal rectifier by using a D-cell battery, or in this case, two batteries actually, to generate that DC signal. The only D-cell battery holder that I could find at my local electronics store was for two batteries, and it's actually a little better to go with three volts instead of 1.5 volts, because some older pre-war and post-war relays need a little extra boost to get moving. You would too at 75 to 90 years old. For added safety, a diode protects the battery pack from the reverse polarity feedback from the AC track power signal, which may or may not be an issue in the end, 
but for a few cents per diode, it's cheap insurance. Remember, I am not an electrician, nor do I play one on television, and I only know enough about electronics to get myself into trouble. So those of you who really know your stuff, be free to let us know in the comments whether the diode is really necessary or not, or any other changes that you think are necessary. A simple momentary contact push button of your choice activates the circuit. And an optional double pole double throw toggle switch can be added to switch between the whistle and bell modes. It's low tech, but it works like a charm. This one isn't super neat because, as I mentioned, I don't need a controller like this for my own layout, but I instead make this example just to show you that it can be done. While this project only cost me a couple of dollars since most of the parts were already on my workbench, I hope to make more projects like these that I don't necessarily need for my own use thanks to the financial support of our channel members. Members have access to exclusive behind-the-scenes video content, shoutouts, messages, and more, as well as my sincerest thanks for your support. And don't worry, if you don't join, you will still have access to all of the great content you've grown accustomed to absolutely free. All right, the commercial is over. Let's build this thing. Here's what you'll need. Two 1.5-volt D-cell batteries and a holder. A small diode such as a 1N4001, or I'm using a 1N4002 because that's what's in my parts box. It'll, it'll still work fine. A double pole double throw toggle switch, some wire, and a small project box. I designed and 3D printed my own project box, but you can also simply mount the items on your control panel or use any plastic box you might have laying around instead of spending your hard-earned train dollars on a project box. If you wish to 3D print yours, the plans are posted on Thingiverse. You may need to adjust some of the dimensions based on your own battery box and components. And of course, we need some basic soldering tools and, of course, the necessary locomotive with the proper whistle, bell, or horn features. Start by connecting the diode to the positive terminal of the battery holder. That's the end of the battery with the bump. Most diodes these days are marked with a band, and the diode's banded side goes toward the battery. This prevents reverse polarity feedback from the track messing with your battery. Now, solder a wire from the other end of the diode to one pole on your momentary contact push button. It doesn't matter which one. Any button will work, but the larger the button, the more comfortable it will be for you to blow your horn, or toot your whistle, or ring your bell. Now, solder a wire from the other pole of the button to one of the corner poles on the double pole double throw switch. The double pole double throw, or DPDT, has six terminals, two center poles, and four outer ones. Connect the battery's negative terminal to the opposite pole on the same side where you wired the positive side. Now attach two short wires from the corner poles that you've already wired to the opposite corner poles, making an X pattern. When the toggle switch is thrown to this side, it will reverse the polarity of your output. Then the two center poles of your DPDT will provide the output to your track. Solder a wire to each of these poles. A few notes about the DPDT. First, any size will do. But if your eyesight is getting weaker like mine, or if you don't like soldering, larger switches are available with screw terminals for easier connecting. I'm just using this particular toggle because it's handy in my parts box. Let's follow the circuit so far. The positive DC voltage leaves the bumpy end of our battery and passes through our diode, which may or may not be necessary to prevent reverse polarity feedback into the battery. I'm sure that some real electricians will let us know in the comments. In any case, it doesn't hurt anything. After passing through the diode, the positive current passes through our momentary contact normal off push button that activates our whistle and bell circuit. From there, the positive voltage first goes to one side of the DPDT toggle and then to the opposite corner. Then, depending on the direction the toggle is thrown, the center pole picks up the current from one side or the other and sends it on its way. On a small layout with a single powered loop, you can attach the controller directly to the track with our outbound current going to the center rail. 
If you have multiple isolated blocks, attach the controller wires in the same place as the power outputs from your transformer. After activating the whistle, horn, or bell, our DC signal returns through the outside rails to our inbound wire, either connected to the track or the transformer common feed. It then goes to the opposite center pole on the DPDT from our positive feed, and then to the opposite corners of the DPDT. Then a wire from one of the DPDT corners goes back to the negative side of our battery pack, bypassing the button and diode completely. Then mount everything inside a project box for safety, and you're done. Flip the switch one way for whistle and horn, and the other way for the bell, and enjoy these classic sounds. Except, there's always an exception, isn't there? K-Line trains use the opposite polarity for their whistles to avoid infringing upon Lionel's patent. So a K-Line whistle will operate with a toggle in the same position as a Lionel bell, not a Lionel whistle. Time for the smoke test. Hook it up to your layout, run your train, and press the button you should hear the sweet whistle or bell on command. Pro tip, if the sounds don't trigger, double check your diode orientation and flip it around. Also, keep an eye on that battery. It'll last a long time, but swap it out when it's too low to keep those sounds sounding crisply. Here it is with a post-war horn. And a modern horn. And a modern lino whistle. And a post war lino whistle. And a canine whistle. and a Williams Bell. Note that some pre-war and very early post-war whistles may not work with this controller unless they are in peak operating condition. They may require a little bit more voltage than our 2D batteries can muster. And there you have it, the easiest Lionel whistle controller ever. For me, the most expensive part was $3 for the battery holder. Everything else was already in my parts box or printed on my 3D printer. But to purchase all of the components would certainly cost less than $20, and probably even less than that. The most expensive part is probably the batteries. For less than the price of a factory-made standalone sound controller, you've got full control over your train's whistle, bell, and horn. No fancy multi-control transformer required. If you like this project, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring the bell. See what I did there? For more toy train tips and tricks. Have questions or suggestions? Drop them in the comments below. And until next time, toot your own horn, ring your bells, and by all means, keep the trains running. And we'll catch you next time with more toy train tips and tricks.